Hi everyone, in my previous book reader here, today I want to talk about why we sleep by Matty Walker. For a bit of background on me personally, I really like sleep but it's hard for me to sleep if there's anything at all that I'm still processing on my mind or if there's anything that distracts me at all. If I'm feeling the clothes on my collarbone, if there's noise or bugs like mosquitoes, it will be much more difficult for me to sleep. I can wake up from my own snores or if I drool even when I'm really tired so I have to kind of wipe my drool away. Thankfully I found ways and checklists on what I should and should not do in order for me to at least fall asleep at around midnight. But I'm still interested to know more about sleep and I've heard about this book for a long time during the time it is the most viral a few years ago. Right now Matthew Walker I think is the leading talker of the benefit of good sleep. The book have all the things that people said when they're talking about sleep in scientific terms. You have circadian rhythm, which is the sleep cycle that everyone have, including night owls. There's melatonin, the chemical that our body produces to prepare us to sleep. Also the name used for the drugs that helps people go to sleep. The book also went a lot deeper into NREM and REM sleep, which is no rapid eye movement and rapid eye movement that show how deep and how good is the quality of your sleep. This is also affected a lot by your circadian rhythm since at what time you sleep and what time you wake up affected what level your NRIM will be. Before I go more in depth into my review of the book, it's important to highlight that sleep is a skill. A skill that you can train by building good habits which unfortunately may take some time. I made a small list on do's and don'ts from what I've tried for years and have worked from me and from the book recommendation itself. Do's 1. Keep your room dark and cold, it's easier to get into the circadian rhythm that prepares you to sleep with this condition. 2. Have some relaxing activity 1 or 2 hours before your sleep. Mainly I listen to some relaxing white noise like ASMR but there are tons of other ways to relax if this don't work for you. Don'ts 1. Avoid any emotionally charged content before you sleep. Same with exercise. Avoid anything that moves the gears in your brain a bit too much like anything rage inducing or political. You want to cool your body and mind, all of that will still be there the next morning. 2. Don't take nap or drink strong caffeine after 3 pm. It takes around 8 to 10 hours before caffeine clear out of your system. 3. Don't drink alcohol close to your sleep. Alcohol lowers the quality of your sleep significantly because your body is processing the alcohol during your sleep. 4. Don't eat or drink too much before sleep. The later at night you are, the more you'll want to go to the toilet. 5. Don't force yourself to sleep if after an hour in bed you're unable to sleep. Get out of your bed and try to relax outside of the bed. You don't want to internalize laying on your bed with the difficulty of going to sleep. Okay, getting back to the book. First of all, this book is really boring. It's the kind of book that is sloppily written and then marketed as a productive use of your time. It's the kind of book that makes people read less book. Because after school traumatized us out of book, then this is the kind of book that you force yourself to read. There's even this weird copium about how the book might put you to sleep, like how about edit your writing and make them shorter and more interesting instead of blaming your readers. A second and more importantly, this book is weird, like really weird. A lot of it is still true like how melatonin is not a substance that is regulated by the FDA, but a lot of the pack in the book is highly exaggerated for effects. You know what I mean, it's like this lamp. It's bright but it's not like I'm gonna go oh my eyes I'm gonna go blind make it stop for example earlier in the book he mentioned that the CDC has made sleep deprivation a public health epidemic but I cannot find any evidence that the CDC has mentioned them anywhere on their official link there are a few online articles from random website with dead links but that's about it I can try to look into it further but if in your book that I paid for it doesn't have any sources and I cannot find the sources myself I will blame you there's also an interesting study earlier in the book about how travel and jet lag makes you lose brain cell and affect your short-term memory but the only study I can find relating to it is this and this study is very clear that it has some limitation in the study that for example there is a lack of data and that the result is unclear what is very clear is that its effect is just temporary. Again, not only the result of the study is highly exaggerated, this fact had no source link anywhere in the book regarding the study. I had to look it up myself. And speaking of sources, the book most of the time don't even bother to put the link to any of the sources she used in the book. There are some sources in the footnotes of the book, but these are the exception, not the norms. Most of the book really feels like he just 
melted the fuck up. For example, he said that there's a connection between a lack of sleep and cancer. But most of what I can find online are articles without any sources in them. There are only two studies I found regarding this, and their results are either one inconclusive, or two is more of an age thing rather than a sleep thing. The only kind of sources that is laying at the end of the book is sources about the grab used in the book that do not allow themselves to be used in the book, which is already weird enough. And then they are very obviously have modified written in them. And this modified varies from what I think so the author can use them in the book to it is modified to fit the argument a bit too much. One of the graphs that shows study on student injury rate are generally higher on 8 hours or more and less than that there are more injury. But the original graph has more detail where the 5 hour sleep has lower injury rate than the 6 hour and 7 hours, which kinda make the study looks off. The edition I at least changed the graphic into this. From what I look up, the first edition just omit the 5 hour graph so it fits more into his argument. He also tried to make a lot of problems into the fault of lack of sleep. For example, the author doesn't seem to realize that there are people who cannot help but have an abysmal sleep schedule because of the work that they have to do. Truck drivers, a lot of chefs, doctors and nurses, people who work more than one job easily came to mind. Where sleeping just another short hour might lose them their jobs or other people's lives. At one point of the book, the author is basically saying, imagine a social class difference between those that can sleep well and those that cannot sleep well. What do you mean imagine? Are you saying imagine if people had jobs that make them have to stay up all night? Or imagine if their working hours is so much they barely have time to sleep and have to pee in a bottle? Like, for real, what do you mean imagine if having enough sleep gave rise to social class difference? Have you been living under a rock? Did you sleep too much? The problems that some of these people have is not a lack of sleep. A lack of sleep is caused directly by the problems they have. Also, a lot of the deadly diseases that give you short lifespan tends to make you develop insomnia either from the disease itself or from anxiety. So again, it is not that the lack of sleep that causes all these things, but the other way around. It is not that lack of sleep is the cause, it is the symptoms. And even in some of his arguments that have a solid study backing it about the possible danger of lack of sleep, lack of sleep itself is a small part of a lot of other causes like in the study relating to obesity and lack of sleep. And usually there are underlying causes that cause the lack of sleep itself. I think what it did good at least partially is honing on how important sleep is and how you should underestimate its importance no matter what age you are. It's easy to keep doing the lifestyle we have when we're much younger when it's super easy to say things like sleep are for the weak. But a lack of sleep does affect you more the older you get. Even in things as simple as how much energy you have the following day after a lack of sleep. But that's about the extent of good press I can give the book. This book kinda did what the veganism book is doing which is making a book where you have to fact check most of the information yourself since the author did not bother with quality control of the information given. It's just less annoying than the vegan book I've reviewed barely because this book at least didn't pretend to be some kind of moral authority. The book doesn't feel like it have bad intention in its writing. I really do think the author just wants to tell you how important it is for our health to get a good night's sleep which makes a lot of the data manipulation just weird and really really dumb to put in the book. I mean a lot of what is placed in the book doesn't feel like it needs to be placed there. There's a short segment where he's mentioned someone found Jessica sleeping on the couch and he questioned how do we know she's sleeping and not in a coma or dead? What do you mean? My guy, you know people have made a mistake thinking that a dead person was sleeping, right? This is such a weird thing to add in the book. And that's mostly how the book is written. A lot of things are just added into the book to add more words and more pages so it can be sold in the self-help section. It's quantity over quality. Even without this book, most people would agree and already understand that not getting enough sleep sucks. It just makes the next day so much less enjoyable. I think that's part of why shows like Insomniac After School or Call of the Night can be relatable to a lot of people. Because most of us want a good night's sleep. But whatever the intention this book is written, I think having a sloppily written book from an author that is so oblivious to the state of the world who scares people and makes them more anxious about not being able to sleep for 8 hours every day is not exactly the help people need to get better sleep schedule. I give this book a 1.75. What do you think? Are you gonna read it? Did I miss anything? Leave your thoughts in the comment below and subscribe to the channel. That's about it.